I'm Bernie from Crafters Companion. I'm here today to show you how to make this trendy tote bag that's absolutely fantastic. This is brought to you by Threaders. So let's have a look to see how you make it. So you're going to get the instructions. We're also going to get the pattern pack. Now, our patterns always come with a lovely high quality paper. So it's not the usual tissue paper that you get. It's not going to tear easily. When you open it up, it does open up to A1. But when you open it up, what you're going to have is all of your pieces on here that you're going to cut out. So use your paper scissors. Use an old blade in a rotary cutter. Keep your good ones for your fabric. You're going to cut all of these out, and then you're going to lay them onto your fabric to cut them out. Now, the one thing I just want to note on this one, the tote bag, is that on some of the pieces, you'll see that it has, it says, alignment points. So once you've got all of your pieces done, just get your heat erasable pen and you're going to mark those onto your fabric. Okay? And then we're going to use them later on. They're going to help us put the zips in the bag. Oh, I said zips. Don't be scared. Honestly, it is so easy. We give you some extra tools in this as well to help you do that. Now, when you do cut it out, normally you would pin your pattern pieces onto your fabric. But what I like to use is our paper pattern spray. So what this is, is a repositionable spray and it activates with heat. So you're going to spray this onto the back of your paper pattern, just a light mist, a few seconds to let it dry. Pop it onto the reverse side or the front side of your fabric, it doesn't matter which. And then you're going to iron it on and the heat of the iron will activate the glue, which was included in the spray, and stick it temporarily like a sticky note that you peel off. The other thing you get is your zip placement tool so what you've got on here is the zip pockets for the inner and that's the inner of your bag and then the outer pockets for the front side of the bag as well so you're going to get your outer pieces of your bag and what we've used on this one is this lovely uh, riley blake um sarah's own design metal lane isn't it fantastic so you've got your top panel of your bag and then we've got the suede fabric on the bottom and you're going to actually then stitch these together after you've added your wad in. And by adding your wad in, you're going to add that with your stick and spray. So we're going to stitch these two pieces together on both sides because you'll have cut two of these and two of these. And once you've stitched it together, quarter inch seam, you're then going to use a longer stitch and top stitch just along the edge of here. Now, given that top stitch and what that do, it's securing that seam. But what it's also doing is giving you that professional finish. So in your pattern pieces, you'll have a pocket, inner pocket piece. And then what I've done here is I've taken the tool and in the instructions, it actually tells you where to place it. So it tells you for the front zip pockets, which is the one we're doing here, alignment point. And that was the alignment point from the pattern that we drew on. And I just used the heat erasable pen for that. The instructions will then tell you the front zip pocket, you're going to draw around this grid. And then also it then tells you to use the cut line section and again draw those lines in. Off the pattern as well, you will have marked alignment points on here. So you're going to line up the alignment points in there like that. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to stitch around this outer rectangle. And it's worth making your stitch slightly smaller. So if you normally stitch at 2.5, 2.5 millimetres, drop it down to about 2 millimetres because you want a really tight stitch on here. We've stitched all the way along there. If I lift that up, you can see there that we've stitched that with a really small stitch. And then you're going to then cut into that opening and that's going to open all that out and then this is where the magic happens you think well how on earth is that going to make a pocket what you do then is push everything through that hole it's like a little magic trick you're going to push everything through that hole you're going to flip it to the other side and this is where you just want to give it a nice little Little, not a little tug, but just a little pull just to get it all nice and neat. And this is where it pays to get your iron out. So you've got your zip, and then what you're going to do is pop that behind that little opening. 
So we're going to open the zip just a, a little tiny bit. And what you're going to do is get that lined up as best you can. Pop some pins in if you need to. And then what you're going to do is stitch all the way around that rectangle. But this time with a longer stitch. So I would stitch maybe a three millimetre. But we can see that's the other side. What we've done is brought this up to here, lined up the top section. And then all we've done is stitched all the way around the outside, but only of the line and fabric. So you just lift it away from your front wadding piece. And you've got a good sort of inch or so there. So you've got plenty of room to get in there with your machine and just stitch all the way around there. And what will happen is that zip will be inside all stitched into place. If we open it up and I turn it through, you can see there that that's stitched inside. You've got no raw edges or anything in there. Everything's encased. It's all encased. And then the top bit is the little top bit of the pocket. So you can get quite a lot in there. They're really, really deep pockets that you can get in. Your phone, your keys, your purse in there. With that zip as well, it's on the outside of the bag, but it's going to be more secure than just a like a slip-in pocket, isn't it? So you got to, that's your front zip part. So this is this is known as a recess zip. So if I put it that way, you'll be able to see. We we'll see how it actually sits in, and it's all encased in here. There's no raw edges in there at all. So the pattern pieces again are going to be. It's, much, it's pretty much a square of fabric for this one. And you fold in a quarter inch on each side. You just see, I've just folded that and give it a little press. And then you're going to fold it in half. Okay. And then you're going to pop that over the end of your zip. And I'll pop a little pin in just so it's in so you can see. But you would stitch around all the way around those four sides. And that's going to encase the end of the zip and neaten it up. And that's what we've done so I've got my zip here. I've already put this side on. But what I've got here is I've got the lining fabric underneath, right side facing up. Then I've got the zip. And then I've got this beautiful grey flower fabric, which is the outer fabric, on the top. And again, right sides together. So it's, it's sandwiching the zip in between. Now, the difference with this one is than putting a, a, a normal zip in that you would normally put in. If you can see at the end, I've actually folded it over a quarter of an inch on both sides and also on the lining. And we're going to stitch close to the edge here. And the reason why we do that is to keep the fabric away from the zip tee. So when you open and close your zip, it doesn't catch in there, but that's going to be stitched. But at the same time, we're also going to stitch down these sides. We now need, before we put it into the bag, we need to do the handles. So, again, you're going to cut your fabric out from the pattern pieces. And I've got my fabric here. Again, I've put interfacing on this one. But you don't have to. You can use a, a um, wadding if you prefer. Or a fusible fleece if you want, you know, a little bit of padding in there. Any, you know, anything that you've got in your stash, really. And then what you're going to do is you're going to press it wrong sides together lengthways like that. And you're going to make two of these. And then you're going to open it up. And then you're going to fold halfway into the middle so they meet and then you're going to fold it in half again all the way along and then you're going to stitch that on your machine again with a long stitch so you go in the, with my wad in here this is quite thick so again I would use a three millimeter three and a half millimeter stitch length you're going to stitch down one side and I always stitch down the open side first because if I stitch down the other side it means you can't adjust at this side so I'll stitch down the long side and then for neatness and evenness I stitch along the other side as well and then what will happen is you'll get your piece of handle like that that's beautifully stitched and you're going to make two of those now the other pattern pieces you've got this top panel piece so this I've done in the suede and in the booklet this is the good one to check the booklet of which order you put them together at so I need my piece of the zip insert. I need my handle. 
And then it's telling me here, it's saying equally position the back handle on the right side of the outer main panel. So I can do that. So when you're doing, when it's saying put something on equally, that's your, your judgment of how wide you want your handles. But to get an equal part, the easiest way I find is if you find the centre of your piece. So to find the centre of your piece, if you just fold it in half like that, just give it a little finger press. You could actually trim it a little bit there if you want, which is, I think, what I'll do. You could use your heat erasable pen just to mark the centre. There we go. So I can see my centre point there. This is where your mat comes into use, because you could get the ruler, but I don't need to measure it in numbers. I just need to say spaces. So if I have it on this line here is my centre line. So if I put that there, there we go. That's our centre line. So then I'm going to get the handle and I'm going to say, right, I'm going to have three along. So three along to there. So I'm going to line that up. Again, I'm getting my clip. My clips are invaluable. I use my clips all the time. So that one in there. And then again, three the other way. There we go. So I know now, just from folding that in half and marking the centre point, to actually putting that on the mat and using the lines on my mat, I've got that perfect. And then all you just want to just double check that you haven't got your handle twisted. Now we need to place the contrasting panel on. So that's going to go on the top and that's going to be in effect right sides together. So again, I'll just clip. And then you're going to take your zip panel. And your zip panel again needs to be right sides together. So this is the outer. This is the outer. So that's your right side. That's your right side. And then again, you're going to position that centrally on there. Yeah. And then what you're going to do is take this to your machine. Now, if you have a walking foot, this is probably a good time to use the walking foot because you've got a lot of layers here. I would take your time, definitely use a longer stitch. Um, a quarter of an inch or a little bit more if you feel uh, more comfortable. And just a quarter of an inch all the way along and then once that's stitched you'll see then that your bag handles are going to be on the outside which is where we want them and that insert is going to be on the inside for the zip and then what you're going to do is take your other outside piece and do exactly the same on this side it'll look like this so if i open this out we can see that i've got my panels inside and then I've got that zip stitched on each side as well. And then what you do at that point is put both of these pieces together and you're going to stitch down each side and along the bottom. And then with this one, we box the corners. So if you've not heard that phrase before, you may have noticed that in the piece, you've got like a square cut out of here. So what it means is, you're going to pull these together and you're going to match up the side seams. You can see there how I've matched up those two side seams. And because the pattern has cut those that square out, if you like, of the corner, it will match perfectly. So what you're looking for is that you've got here a bit of like a 45 degree angle. And then you're going to stitch all the way across there. And I would start and reverse at this start and end just to secure your stitches. And now can we see there how we've got that lovely box corner? And then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. There we go. So I'm going to pop this aside for now and then we're going to do the lining. If we go back, we're probably going to repeat a few of the steps that we did with the outside. So we had the top panel and we had the bottom panel. So you can just see the join here. If I turn it over, you can see we've got the join there but then this time we're going to do um, that inside zip so this time we've got our pocket piece that we've got the interfacing on so again we've got that alignment point we've got the alignment point that we've transferred from the pattern and also as well if you forget if you get to this point oh I forgot to put that alignment point on you can just grab your pattern piece again line your pattern piece on top of your fabric and then just mark it on. So don't worry if you've already, if you've cut it all out and forgot to put it on, you can always put it on after. So I'm going to line that up with the line on my tool. And then again, as you can see, I've drawn mine in. 
got my heat erasable pen and I've gone around and just drawn around there. So we've got that in there and then while we're on, we'll go in and mark those cut lines for later. You're going to have your alignment marks and then the pattern actually does say that to once you've got it aligned, just then move it down an inch. So if you move it down about an inch, that just gives this, um, you, give, you need plenty of room in here to add your panels later on. So move it down about an inch and then pin it if you need to. And then again, with that short two millimeter stitch, you're going to stitch all the way around that rectangle. Here we are. We've got it. And then we're going to do the magic again. Post it through the letterbox. <laughs> I tend to give it a little bit of a finger press first. It actually does help to have the interfacing on because it gives it something to crease. And then where you can see these are a little bit like puckered, if you like, at the corners, that's where, because you've got that little tiny stitch that you did, you can just wriggle it into place. And then when you press it, it will lie flat. So that's one of the other reasons of using that small stitch that you can do it. And then I'll give that a quick little press. So that's the lining done. And that pocket in there as well. Absolutely lovely. Right, so now we're going to attach the lining to the main bag. With this one, what you need to do is make sure that you tuck everything inside. So we've got our handles tucked in. We've got this zip section tucked in. And this top panel, which was that black suede, everything tucked in. And then you're going to get your lining. Keep it this way outside and, and then you're going to pop it inside and then what you're going to do is line up those side seams first of all I say make sure you don't get anything caught underneath and there is a lot of bulk here so it is worth just taking your time just to get that lined up if you find you've got a little bit of bulk just nudge it round a little bit that my side seam there just wasn't quite lined up and if i just show you the inside now just so you know what to expect you're going to look inside and think well that look what's happened here what's all this here and what that is is because we've got that recess zip in there the zip doesn't go all the way to the end it only goes well I'm saying it's only a couple of a couple of inches from the end to get the recess effect so this is actually sitting on top of the zip but as long as it's this bit that you're concentrating on that you're stitching, you don't need to worry of anything that's happening underneath. So just make sure whether you put plenty of clips in and then you're going to say stitch all the way around there. And then what you can do, once you've stitched it, you can get that, we've left that gap in the bottom of the lining and we're going to turn everything through so we can then move on to the next step. So we've got the bag turned through. Isn't it looking absolutely fabulous? We've got one more step to do. That's it. And then sew that hole up in the bottom, which you could do now if you wanted. You can sew the hole up in the lining now. You'll also have a pattern for two strips for the top panel of the lining. And then what you're going to do is stitch them together. So you're going to make a loop and you're going to press the seam over by a quarter of an inch all the way around. And then what we're going to do is loop this over the top of the bag. So if you get your handles underneath, all the way around, and the same on the other side, clip all of that, and then again, stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around the top. So we've stitched that around. What we've done here is folded it over, and the little bit that's the quarter inch seam will overlap all on the inside here, and then what I've done here is I've just done a little hand stitch and it's just a little whip stitch all the way around just to secure that. And then I've done a top stitch very close to the edge. And again, it's like that top stitch we did right at the start when we did this top stitch on the outer panel here just gives it that extra professional finish. And that there has finished our trendy tote bag. And I hope you'll agree that once you made one, you're going to make quite a few and give them as presents, as gifts, even sell them. Because you know our angel policy, you can make and sell as many as you like. So this is our trendy tote bag.